Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Women in Sports vlog interviews. I am Marianne Rakai, also known as Tired Mom Runs. And uh, this year, I wanted to do something really special for honoring the women in sports. And today I have um, pleasure and honor to have Sarah Lise Harris all the way from Dubai. And I am going to introduce you to her she is a sassy coach in her 50s those are her own words takes a holistic <laughs> approach to training focusing on enhancing ability agility and strength specializing in menopausal women her goal is to elevate performance foster positive body relationships and enhance overall well-being with over 30, 20 years of experience as free diving and scuba diving instructor sarah sought new challenges in the last decade she transitioned into becoming an Iron Mom, Iron, Iron Mom, Iron Man coach, <laughs> and Ocean Man open water swimming coach, seeking the ultimate empowerment and strength in her athletic journey. Holding certifications as a previous cycling coach, level two DSU road cycling, and Nesta Kettlebell coach, Sarah has explored diverse movements and programs to fortify her own menopausal body enabling her to continue excelling in endurance sports. And I want to read something that I found on your website, which I think was just brilliant. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. She, <laughs> she uh, Sarah writes, I have learned that training is not all about losing weight and being fitter, but the improvement of performance relationships, especially with your own changing body, lifestyle choices and general well-being. I love that uh, because oftentimes I think we tend to think, oh, we, we need to exercise to lose weight or look a certain way. And oh, yeah. yeah, so that that sentence just really caught my attention. Can can we t double tap in that straight away? We what can. are your thoughts? Yeah. So uh, the first part you spoke about um, how athletes, or what I spoke about my website, which I think you did for you. And when you sent me an email, you sent me a list of questions just to kind of jog my memory and inspire stuff in my head. Uh, during the last 10 years, I have lost and found three or four times 10 kilograms on my body. And I started perimenopause at the age of 46 and became really unhappy with the way my body changed in appearance. So I've always had a strong body. My parents are very athletic, uh, especially my father, and I was always encouraged to be athletic. So um, sometimes on the bit of extreme side in terms of weight management. And in 2017, I was, I'm going to say, I was then, what, 47 or something, so I was really getting menopausal, and a friend of mine was um, dying of terminal cancer, so I said to my husband, Martin, I said, you know, when Noreen dies, I'm going to shave my head, and he said, no, 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 you need to shave your head before she dies, so she can see you, so I thought, okay, so I went to the hairdresser here in Dubai, and I shaved off, my hair was the same length as it is now, so I shaved it all off and sent all the pony tails away for weeks. And uh, it took a long time for it to, to grow out. And while that was happening, I got mistaken for a man so many times. Mm -hmm. I was like, I have thought, why would you make that mistake? But anyway, um, so together with poor body image, then struggling with not having any hair, I stopped racing for a while, didn't want to appear at races, didn't want to really appear anywhere because people were looking at my hair. Well, I thought that people were looking at my hair and looking at me weird. And then I thought to myself, you know what? Cancer patients go through this. That's exactly why we do shave our heads in solidarity because this is exactly what they go through. My friend Noreen said to me, losing my looks was harder than chemo. So, oh, my gosh. Yeah. 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 Uh, rest in peace, Noreen. So, I've gone up on a tangent, but poor body image 
I think I've had it since I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is long stem. This goes down to relationships with your parents and your teachers and your family and everything else. There's, there's many things that can affect full, full body image. And when my hair grew out to about that long, <laughs> I just thought, you know what? Why, why are you holding back? I actually started teaching beginners on weekends. So I would do beginners rides because it was a safe environment and they were beginners. So I was always better. Um, and I felt safe in that nobody was judging me and nobody mm-hmm. was looking how quick I was and everything else. Mm-hmm. And then I suddenly thought, you know what? There's a joy in this. Mm-hmm. There is a joy in bringing women from the couch or very little to being something phenomenal. And I suddenly realized, well, that's what you have to do to yourself. And some of these women have gone on, you know, after three years or so to other coaches to become better, to more elite coaches and to become better. And you see them and you see them race and you think you have to feel proud. And not, you don't have to be a skinny athlete to be a successful athlete. Absolutely not. Uh, the body is. is an incredible thing. Body is incredible thing, and uh, thank you, thank you for sharing that because it, it it's a vulnerable subject like body image, and the body image goes so hand in hand uh, with oh. your men- mental health. Yes, um, yes, it does. I remember I was I was a I was a talented youngster, and but I got my periods when I was ten years old, so I I matured often earlier than my friends so I was getting hips and breasts while everybody else was uh still you know boy boyish look yeah <clears throat> straight up and down straight <laughs> up and down and I have this yeah. picture that I look back into uh, sometimes to remind myself how far my body image has co- uh, come now because I, so I was I was running track and field and I was a cross country mm-hmm. skier, and I remember this one of my competitors' moms told me, "Oh, Mariana is getting hips; uh, she's slowing down." I was twelve years old, so ever since that one little comment, uh, that like, it stuck in my head all these years. I still remember it, and I'm just like, okay, so I I have big butt. I can't be fast. It's it's make crazy. Fun, make the world go around, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 I mean I'm I'm very strong like like you. I I'm muscular yeah. and I'm happy for it now as I'm aging. Yeah. I'm for, turning forty six. I'm happy that I carry that much muscle because mm-hmm. I know I'm strong and I'm healthy. So. Yeah. So when when you that sentence you wrote on the website, it's just like it hit me so hard, and I am happy that you you promote that. And I yeah. I I also uh, want to come back to your point, like teaching new beginners. I love that too because there's that joy. There's mm-hmm. the, the the at first there is this, I can't do that. Mm. But you just encourage them and you try to, you know, uh, push them a little, challenge them a little, and they can do these incredible things that they never thought they could do. I witnessed it so many times and it's so uplifting and uh, powerful. In 2020, I got a, I got an email out the blue from somebody who found me on my website. So someone based here in Dubai, Tina. Hello, Tina. She knows I'm going to talk about her. And uh, she texted me and she said, I have a fear of water, but I want to learn how to swim. It's one of the things that I want to do in life. Wow, this is brave. So one thing is learning how to run, learning how to ride a bike. Mm-hmm. But to get in the water, mm-hmm. this is this is huge. So I, was, I wasn't quite sure what to expect anyway. So she turns up and we're at our community pool where I was living at the time. And uh, we sat on the side of the pool and chatted and she had her feet in the pool. And I said, okay, should we stand on the shallow end? And her whole body froze. So we went from walking in the shallow water to then floating on a noodle and 
having small panics, to then kicking across the width of a pool on a noodle, to a year later, we went to Kite Beach and she swam in the sea in the shadows. In the shallows. Oh, oh my God, that's amazing. She's my biggest inspiration from a person who has dealt with fear. One of our hashtags is feel fearless. She mm -hmm. absolutely put fear in the dustbin and said, you know what? I am going to conquer this thing. These are the moments that make you remember how much you love this job. Yeah. Totally. How old is Tina? Can I ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's forty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save her dignity now. She's forty something. Okay. Yeah. In in the forties. <laughs> Wiki cast. She's in her forties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's not old. She's not young. <laughs> it, she's perfect. Um, that is that is such a powerful message. You know, like going from fear to fearless uh that that is that is a, a beautiful example um let's reel back a little bit sarah because i want to i want to learn more about your background so that kind of perfectly segues to your background uh you were a scuba diver i was so i was living in spain in the 90s when barcelona was in its heyday absolutely it was in its heyday just post olympics the city was thriving and I landed a job, I was working in London, landed a job in Spain and I worked there for, I worked at the company for five years. And then one morning I turned around, looked in the mirror in the morning, I thought, no, I don't like you. I don't like how you look. I don't like what you're doing. You're not headed in the right direction. I had all these wild thoughts about breaking free and I did, I left everything and I went to the Maldives and I did a scuba diving course. I, I not scuba, scuba diving instructor course. And I stayed there a year. Um, upset a few people by doing that. But sometimes in life, you have to decide and make a choice about what works for you and what what might work for you doesn't work for other people. But eventually yeah. you find your way. So I went and became a scuba diving instructor. And then from the Maldives, I went to go work in the Cayman Islands. Sorry, I'm itching. This is... um. Taurine. Sorry, okay. I just get itch for taurine. Yeah, I have had a shower, by the way. It's just, and I think also menopausal women. Hands up who doesn't get itchy skin. There you go. Anyway, so I went to go live in the Cayman Islands. And at the dive shop where I was working was the entire uh, Canadian national freediving team. I didn't even know what freediving was. We learned how to do breath hold dives. It used to be called skin diving way back when. Um, so skin diving, yes, a couple of eaters, get a shell, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I was watching what these guys were doing. I was thinking, wow, this is something incredible. How do you hold your breath and dive so deep? So I did my first course with one of the girls, Kelly, and I was so chuffed that I could dive to 10 meters. Like, woohoo, 10 meters. Think about it now. And that's how that trajectory came. So then I thought, well, I'd like to become an instructor, so I just dived and dived and got more experience. And then when I moved to the UAE in 2005, I brought over an instructor trainer from the UK, Emma Farrell. Hi, Emma. <laughs> and um, she ran an instructor course for me over the space of six weeks. And we also roped in a whole lot of other people to do their, uh, well, it's an AIDA course, so it's the... An uh, international association of free divers, but it's um, in French, and I'm not even going to go try to say it. Um, and so she took me to instructor level. So I went from 10 meters to 40 meters, and it is the most thrilling experience of your life to be in a silent world with no bubbles. And as I got older, I say older, in my late 30s, early 40s, I started to really struggle with coming up from depth. So mm -hmm. my, I would get real lactate build up in the thighs, it became arduous, and someone said to me, you should take up road cycling because road cycling is legs and lungs and that's exactly what you're doing for free diving, but it's kind of different. It's not as anaerobic, obviously, but it will help you. So I took up road cycling and then uh, one of my friends who actually taught the free dive, she was dating a triathlete. And I said, well, what triathlon? I had no idea what it was. Uh, and well, she explained, and I thought, what? who would want to do that? Well, the swimming part, absolutely, yes, I'd love to do that. Anyway, so 
I went for a couple of sessions with her and then uh, I did my first triathlon in 2012. Um, way back when, when it used to be the Abu Dhabi triathlon, we, we did it from from the marina, if I remember correctly. Yeah, from the marina then, Abu Dhabi. Mm. And I saw such a synergy between taking loads of ladies out on bikes, which I'd been doing, well, I started road cycling in 2011. And then kind of started getting little ladies groups. I met, uh, later on I met Emma Woodcock who set up the Bella Vixens and she was also working for a bike shop. So we started doing these ladies rides. And then to try to fit it all in and teach scuba diving and teach free diving and hold down a job, um, all became too much. And I thought, I actually like this triathlon lark. At the time, I didn't think it would be as expensive as scuba diving. Now that's a big mistake. Triathlon was very expensive. <laughs> Or can be, as you know. Oh, yeah. I've been by to visit. Yeah. And so I got into I got into coaching triathlon and did, you know, the official certification. Um, and then I thought, no, I need more. So I went to British Cycling and said, What could I do? So I did level one, two, um, two plus, so two DSU road cycling. And I can't remember what your question is now. All these tangents, you see, and brain fog. <laughs> so where was I where where was I headed? Oh no, <laughs> I that was that, that was, was beautiful that that was yeah that was your background and uh, mm. it's fascinating how one thing leads to another yeah. um having lived in dubai for five years i know the the triathlon scene there and it's such a multicultural place and athletes from all over the world uh it's quite rich and vibrant uh can you can you tell me any like uh, memorable coaching moments, positive and negative, um, from from the past decade, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, the first one I sort of mentioned, Tina. I think she was my biggest highlight. Mm-hmm. Um, but there have been many moments, and I've got to say that my best moments have been seeing women who started as beginners crossing the finish line, having done a half-distance triathlon, a uh, 70.3 of mm-hmm. That, you know, you can see there's been a whole lot of work put in right there. But I want, I just want to say, coaches provide a plan, they give some motivation, they provide support, etc. But the credit goes to the athlete. I don't think I could sit, sit there and take credit and go, yay, that's my athlete. I do go, yay, that's my athlete. But the athlete is the person that puts in all the work. Totally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They they just they do as they tell well most of the time, um, mm. and they follow your plan and they follow your instructions and they put the effort in. You know, it it it, it could be so easy for me to say, oh yeah yeah yeah, that's because of me, that's because of me. It actually, mm-hmm. isn't. It's because the athlete has been motivated and has been committed to our relationship. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. But I think it was actually last week, one of my former athletes, I coached her for three years. Um, hello, Asma. She sent me a photograph of us hugging at the finish line at the 70.3 in Muscat. And she said to me, oh, do you remember this day? Aww. That, that is, these are memorable moments. You know, I'm 55 this year. My husband keeps having to remind me of things that have happened. You know, a lot of things disappear from my brain and reappear. Those are memorable moments when you're in the present and then somebody remembers you for something great you did or something great you had together. And that, yeah. that's very special. Yeah, it, it's coaching is about relationships. And I, I I agree there, like as coaches, we shouldn't keep our athletes as our trophies because mm. it's at the end of the day, they are making those decisions, especially in races and, and uh you know, we just equip them with guidance and help yeah. them navigate and, you know, be a bouncing board and a partner in crime, like I I, yeah. I I say, partner in crime. But at the end of the day, as an athlete, I have my doubts. And I, you know, like we, we have our moments where we doubt that we can do it and nobody else can do that on the race day other than us. So yeah, I do, I totally agree. Um, and, and also coaches and athletes outgrow each other and that's okay. Yeah, totally. That's absolutely okay. Or yeah. 
you have a six month relationship and then the athlete decides to call it a day that's okay as well yeah yeah so Co- I would say for coaches, and this is a lesson I really had to learn as well, because I've lost athletes, mm-hmm. and then I used to take it really personally. What yeah. did I do? What did I say? Yeah. Is it something I did? And then you ask them, and they say, no, it's just war, because they're not going to want to talk about it. They don't yeah. want to say. Yeah. People are also quite polite or whatever, or yeah. don't feel comfortable in talking about it, and you just got to yeah. let it go. And yeah. One of the things I actually said to one of my athletes this year that, People go, oh, what's your New Year's resolution? I don't have any New Year's resolution. The only resolve I have this year is to let it go. Mm, so every time something happens around or whatever, I just go, let it go. Yeah. And I, you feel so much more free to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, let it go is, is beautiful. I've, go. I've also experienced, like, my, my goal as a coach is to – educate and guide my athletes so that they can fly on their own or go so- go somewhere like I don't want to keep them uh forever as much as I would love to um <clears throat> I want them to be empowered to take their training on their own hands that's that's my goal but it, it stinks always a little bit it's the ego it's a, a, also our <laughs> ego that that doesn't like it right um of course. and so- especially when you see them with another coach on the yeah. same beach yeah the <laughs> and everyone's like hi hi it's like it's okay just say good morning how are yeah. you all doing yeah because we don't need to hide from each other you know yeah uh, so yeah i have no problems with that but i i actually did get some coaching lessons from a life coach on this kind of thing yeah and it uh yeah i don't get upset by it anymore yeah so let let's let's dip into training women in in their forties, in their fifties, in their sixties that come from different cultures. Because uh, Dubai is a melting pot. Uh, mm-hmm. There's people from all o- over the world. Um, can you talk to me about training women from other cultures than our own? Yep. So. On our team and our wider team, so we have a we have a core team of people who, let's say, are on training peaks and who are being directly coached coached by me. Mm-hmm. And then we have ladies who I do PT with, and ladies who just come for swimming, and ladies who come for ad hoc stuff like clinics, but don't have. And we have members, so we have like 40, 40 different ladies. Mm-hmm. So here's a perfect example. One of the team is from yeah. Durban, South Africa. Uh, she is of Indian origin, um, having lived in South Africa many years myself. For me, she's a South African. But she does make a lot of jokes about being Indian because mm-hmm. South African Indians have an amazing sense of humor. Like, I think they have one of the best sense of humor ever. And we turned up for the Dubai Women's Try, and she was doing, Kesh was doing a relay. She was a runner with some other girls, and they met her for the first time. And when I came out of the water, she wasn't on my relay team, but when I came out of the water to go to my relayer, the ladies that were waiting in the relay pen with Kessany were all in stitches. Like she had them, I don't know what she said, but she had them rolling. It was, they had them in stitches. One thing I do know, it doesn't matter where you're from, what you eat at home, where you were born, we all have some similarity. Mm-hmm. So, for example, in the team, there's three or four women with um, autoimmune disease. There are three or four women who are on the other side of menopause, like me. There are three or four women going through menopause. No journey is the same, but everyone can relate to something. Yeah. It doesn't matter what culture you are, it doesn't matter your religion. We have all religions on the team as well, and we have no religions as well. There is a bond between, that forms between women who are all struggling for the same thing. That's mm-hmm. what I found. This is the magic for me with a women's team. We, we always say we are support through sport. So we're not just there to train. We have a private WhatsApp group where lots of private things get discussed or mentioned or asked. And what gets said in the group stays in the group. There is a magic 
between these women that sometimes I'm not even part of. And that is beautiful. That is beautiful, yeah. It is. Yeah. It, they have got their own connection. Sometimes I turn up for training and they've had a coffee together that I didn't know about. I mean, I don't need to know about it. But they're all giggling about, oh, so-and-so said this and this and this. And I love it because they are bonding. Mm -hmm. in, in spite of the fact that some of them are completely different culturally, have different beliefs, religious beliefs or whatever, it's absolutely irrelevant mm -hmm. so, when it comes to sport. Yeah. Yeah. So sport has, you know, united yeah. people from different cultures, backgrounds, religions, and that's that's the beauty of sport. Like when you're on those group rides or go for a run together, you're going in the same directions. And sometimes I, I find like deepest conversations happen when you're doing something hard together. Mm. And and it, it's just so beautiful. Mm. And the girls, some of the girls have been injured. Some of them had long-term injuries. I had a long-term injury as well. As you know, plant health is mm. the devil. In my life, although mm -hmm. fortunately, it's not around at the moment. Um, but even when the girls are injured and aren't racing, they come to races. They stand on the side and they support the team. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what the team is about. Um, and so for me, when people say to me, what's it like training a whole bunch of different women from different cultures who are all you know, over 40 or menopause or whatever? The biggest challenge um, is the is is the hormones. Yeah. <laughs> um, because hormonal reactions differ from woman to woman, and there is no one situation that's the same. Yeah. And also, mental health plays a massive part in this upward journey. I don't want to call it. It's never a downward journey, hey ladies. This is an upward journey mm -hmm. to the prime of your life when your hair goes this color. And you, you know, maybe when you're, well, there's a, like emptinesses when your kids leave home, for example, and you suddenly have time to do stuff for yourself. This is the time of life where you can actually make the most of it. Oh, and, I, lo uh, I love that. That's a great perspective. Yeah. Yeah. This is my time. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't have children, but it was actually my husband that inspired me to say this. He said, what about your emptinesses? Yeah. And I had to think, he goes, yeah. Yeah. Someone actually said to me, what have you done to my wife? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I often remembered that. I don't remember. I kind of like vaguely somewhere in my gray towels, but Martin remembers it. Yeah. Uh, thank goodness for his brain. I, yeah. I, I sense a certain joyfulness in your words and positive mindset growth mindset uh and uh, you know your your group is lucky to have you as their coach um how how has how has your you, you mentioned in the beginning you've had this self talk uh negative self talk where you know you looked at a mirror and said i don't like you mm -hmm. uh, and you said that it's a few times it, it has popped and being a very dominant figure in your life. Mm -hmm. How has the journey from, you know, from your forties, perimenopause, menopause, uh, and beyond, like, how do you, how do you manage the negative self-talk? Uh, so you don't lose your marbles. Yes. I'm glad you said marble. <laughs> We're in a public forum here. Yeah. Public forum. <laughs> yeah. That's a very good question, Inze. So I'm going to be really open here. And I know that possibly some of my family members might listen to this podcast. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will. I don't know. Um, but I have three brothers. Um, and I'm very close to my oldest one and my youngest one on different levels. So they know about this. So as a youngster, I was sexually assaulted uh, three times by different people. And when you said that at the age of 12, you grew hip, well, that was the bane of my life as well. Mm -hmm. And so 
dealing with that. Uh, and I know that I've said this, and so many women listening to this can go, yeah, that was me. I've never been able to talk about it, told no one, haven't told my husband, haven't, you know. And, the, and you have to live with it. The most important thing for you is to approach that instant. So I took on a a coach in 2020, Anna Wallington. She's a, she doesn't like to be called a life coach. She's a peak performance coach. And she helped me with some tools to be able to stand up and rise when the going gets tough. Mm -hmm. So there are days still today, you know, I'm, I'm feeling I'm in fine form at the moment. I think I'm in the best shape that I've been in many, many years. I went for a run this morning with Debbie. Hi Debbie. We had a great run. And I thought I am so lucky to have the physique that I have and the ability that I have to lift, you know, and swing 20, 30 kg kettlebells and still be able to get up in the morning and smile. I, I am really lucky. But still today, I stand in the mirror and I look and I look at my body critically and then I go, stop. Because you can dig yourself into such a dark hole. Hmm. You can criticize your body every day and go, gee, look at that now, I'm looking a bit bloated, this, that, the other. I saw a lady in the gym today and gosh, she had an astonishing physique. But if you really wanted to, you could stand next to her and also pull, pull some things apart. Mm -hmm. Everybody could pull some stuff apart about themselves. Mm -hmm. And you've got to say, what is the point? Because my body is functioning. I can, you know, I can jump, I can spring, I can run, I can ride a bike, I can swim like there's no tomorrow. I have so much to be grateful for. So you have to start from the point of gratitude. And whatever happened to me in the past and as a youngster, that doesn't define the kind of adult or older person that I have to be. It doesn't mm -hmm. define that. Mm -hmm. You can redefine how you want to live the rest of your life. So you can choose. It's only your choice. You can choose to stay in victim mode and wallow in such sadness and years of whatever. Or you could choose to step out of that and go, that was that was then, this is now, look what I have now. Amazing husband, three cats. We you know, we, we have our training camp setting up in Spain. You have so much to look forward to. And if you don't have if you're sitting now and you're looking at me going, I don't have anything to look forward to, make something. Oh, that's that's so good. Small make changes, something. right? Make yeah. something to look forward to. Yeah. What can I do? I'm sitting here alone in my in my lounge and I'm thinking I have nothing to look forward to. No, no, no. Tomorrow, I look forward to waking up and going for a beautiful long walk and, a, and breathe in the air. Mind you, the air in Dubai is not that good. <laughs> but, but if I sit somewhere where you live, breathe in the air. Start yeah. with that. Yes. Oh, my neck, my neck is cracked. Start with that and go, <laughs> but I'm so unfit. Start with one push-up. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I yeah. I hear gratitude and I hear appreciation of your journey. There, everybody has those horrible things uh, that happen to them or difficult things. Nobody mm -hmm. goes through life just cruising. Um, that's what makes you. That that's that has ultimately made who you are Sarah today so I I'm so glad to hear that you're doing well and you're fit and you look fabulous and you're strong and, and I I just love you <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank, thank you. you so much for for sharing uh you made me cry a little bit uh but thank you for sharing that it's it is so powerful and your outlook you know like make something to look, look forward to perfect mj and i do have yeah, nobody days. is yeah of course you have to keep reminding yourself make lists as well make lists. Yep. make lists of the good stuff yeah and then sit back and look at that list again there is so much that you could look forward to and so much you can make for your life yes absolutely i think this is just the perfect time to wrap it up 
Uh, thank you so much for, for sharing your story. That's so powerful. And all the Dubai ladies, you're lucky to have Sarah in Dubai. So um, Sarah, tell me, tell me about your business. You're you're setting up a training camp in mm-hmm. in Spain. You have a open water swim camp coming up. Yes. So I'm setting up a separate company, obviously, in Spain with a Spanish partner so that we are you know, properly legal with all the insurances. And everything mm-hmm. else. One life, one ocean. That's lots to think about if you're out swimming in the open water. Beautiful. And um, I'm so excited about it. And we're setting up the swim camp at the, at the end of June and the lead up to the camp, there is a race at the end of it, which is the Ultra Ebra. The Ebra is a very long river which starts somewhere in Saragossa and ends in the sea in the delta close to where we live. And every year they do this swimming race from just opposite our village, actually, to the sea. It's 30 kilometers downstream. Wow. Um, so that's, that's going to be my first ultra swim. Why the heck not? Why not? That's why not? Ladies. Yes. Why not? You know? I know, um, yeah. I, so, yeah, I thought, well, why not do a swim camp? And you can do a swim camp before that, and you can either race or you don't have to race. But come and do all the training. My brother is one of the kayakers. He's coming <laughs> to support me. You can do half a kilometer or you could do 10 kilometers. We'll set it up every day so that people can get their long distance training in. And in the afternoons, we're going to do mobility and kettlebells. <laughs> Maybe. Have I lost you? I think I've lost you. Oh, no, you're there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you are. I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> That's okay. Bless you. So, yeah, so we might, um, it's going to be a beautiful week. It's a beautiful, in fact, I've had these little t-shirts made. Do you know? This is the prototype. One life, one ocean. And, uh, and it's not, it's not just about swimming. It's about camaraderie. It's about getting together with other swimmers. You learn so much from other swimmers. Um, and showing people what a beautiful place this part of Spain is. So many people want to do training camps in Canary Islands or Girona. Like those are like the two main places, but we have so much to offer in our area. We have mountains. We have trail running. We have mountain biking. Uh, we have kayaking on the river, we have rapids, and then we, of course we have all the sea swimming and the sea food, which is fantastic. As oh, well. And clean air. Clean and air clean ladies. air. Yeah. When you yeah. wake up in the morning, the air quality app says eight. Oh my gosh, that's that's so good. I'm so happy <laughs> for you, Sarah. Um, Thank you. That sounds absolutely amazing. I have to stop talking now because yes. <laughs> I'm losing my Sorry. voice. Thank you so much again um, for for taking your time from your busy schedule. So I really appreciate no, you. I appreciate, and I appreciate the invite. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So my, my pleasure.